Hey basketball coaches and players, today I'm going to give you an explanation on what a 3-2 zone trap defense is and how you can implement this into your game. Let's get down and let's check this out. Okay, so as you already know, a zone defense is when you are guarding an area of the court and not a specific man. Now, generally speaking, how the basics of a 3-2 zone defense work is these overlapping areas there is a trap involved or a double team involved but we're not going to be talking about a regular 3-2 zone defense today to trap in a 3-2 zone you can trap along the sidelines generally closer to half court or you can trap along the baseline generally in the corner from there how does this work well let's just get down to it the player one he is going to be guarding a very large area Area. same as player two and same as player three from there player four is going to be guarding in a large area as well and same as player five if you're going to be running this zone it does take a lot out of your team and you're going to be probably going through substitutions a lot faster so the whole idea let's say we have player one blue the whole idea behind this player is to force player one blue towards the left or right side, preferably towards his weak hand, especially at the youth level. So let's say we're face forcing him left, let's say he's a right handed player, we're forcing him left. To force him left, we need to get player one right onto his hip so that there's no way for him to spin around, and then we need to bring player two in so that now player one cannot run forward he is blocked he can only go towards that left side now from here depending on the other players on the court you may need to bring players four five and three over you have to remember that in a trap zone this is not going to be a regular type of zone where now you have a lot of areas covered or a lot of players covered. You have to understand that this is a riskier situation, sort of like when you're trading stocks. Uh, the higher yielding is sometimes more riskier, but from there, you're forcing player one towards that left side. So now we're forcing him over towards the left side, and what do we see? Well, if we can get him trapped here, this is fantastic. Player 3 is going to be playing the pickoff pass up top. Player 4 is going to be playing the pickoff towards the baseline. And player 5 is going to be moving a bit higher. Now, yes, they are out of their zones at this point in time. Or at least player 5 is out of his zone. Player 4 is slightly out of his zone. But we are looking to intercept passes at this point in time. We can always drop back to our zone if we need to. Now, if we get trapped, uh, get that player trapped along the, the sideline, preferably at the half-court line, we are all set. We have won. We now get that ball. But let's say he gets past, for example, past player two. Well, if he gets past player two, that's totally fine. We need to get our players back a little bit farther. But he gets past player two. He is now getting forced by player two towards the baseline. Player two now needs to ride his hip, and we need to get player four up to now push that trap into this corner. When player one starts to dribble towards that corner, if you haven't noticed already, this is something that the Toronto Raptors use quite a bit. Now, if they can get him trapped in that corner, which doesn't happen in the NBA, but can happen successfully at the youth level, we would have player five move over towards that opposite low post. We would have player three guarding any of the long passes. Player five is guarding, obviously, passes into this area. And player one would move to the free throw line extended to pick off any passes going over here. Again, very risky defense, but with high risk, sometimes comes high reward. This would be a massive trap. There isn't much that he could do. And, of course, you may pick off his pass. He may run out of bounds. He may touch the sideline or baseline. Or he just may get trapped for more than a couple of seconds, in which case it would be a turnover anyways. Now, this next part is what you would normally see with the Toronto Raptors. So, let's say he gets past player two totally, and now player four is on him one-on-one. -on -one. 
At this point in time, what we're going to see is player 4 trying to force player 1 baseline. We're going to be having player 3 drop down, guarding this low post. Player 1 is going to be guarding the free throw line, but his main task is to pick off any kick out passes. Player 3 really needs to watch the baseline because they may just try to do a hammer pass out to player 3, so he really needs to watch this pass. And then, player 4 is going to be riding player 1's hip, and the idea here is to now get him trapped behind the backboard and underneath the backboard with player 4 and 5 trapping him, which are going to be our two bigger players on the court. And obviously he's not going to be able to pass out too successfully out towards this side because of course the backboard and the net is in the way. He would only be able to pass out this way, which is why player 2 needs to start popping down looking to cut off passes over here. Player 1 is cutting off passes here, and Player 3 is cutting off passes here. I hope that this was a great explanation of a 3-2 trap zone defense. If it was, hit that like button and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below if this is something that you would run with your team. If it is, it is a very tough defense to run, and you do need very fast players, but it can be very successful, and you could literally run this for the first two minutes of a game and really get the other team into the hole, into a point deficit and uh, really just start running the points up, and then you could switch to a man-to-man, -man, a 2-3, or my unbeatable basketball zone defense book that you can find down in the description below. I hope that you've enjoyed. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time.